thank you, Brad. Uh, welcome here. Thanks for taking time out early in CES to come here and update uh, about the HDMI World Neato system. So we're here today to talk about the, the road to 8K and some very other some other very interesting features that have recently come out with the HDMI 2.1 specification, uh, which was just released in December, so it's very brand new. But first, I'd like to give our annual sort of update of the marketplace uh, and the doctor base of what's going on out there in the world of HDMI. So HDMI has been a very successful audio-video interface standard. Uh, to date, uh, we have over 7 billion devices have been shipped since HDMI 1 first came out around 2002. So it's taken an industry to do this, but it has been very successful, widely utilized, and uh, consumers around the world know what this brand stands for, knows that this is the cable, this is the connectivity I look for when I go out and buy a TV or a PC or a set-top box. Uh, last year, we over 900 million devices shipped, so we're rapidly approaching the, the billion unit a year market. That is huge. And also, there's 1,800 companies around the world designing and building HDMI products. This ranges from uh, intellectual property that goes into chips, chips that uh, integrate HDMI of all flavors, uh, subsystems and full systems such as Blu-ray players, and TVs, and even new categories that we'll talk about here in a minute. And you can see the, the origins of HDMI go back to the days of the CE industry. How do you connect, a, at that time, a DVD player to a TV or a set-top box to a TV using a digital interface? Well, because it's been so widely adopted across displays, that it has now moved into other type of categories that nobody would have imagined 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, so now we're seeing it into uh, karaoke players, we're seeing it in healthcare products, uh, we're also seeing it in wearables, AR, VR, uh, and also automotive. And this just shows the predictions from IHS about how the HDMI market continues to grow uh, and pretty soon here we'll be reaching the over a billion served uh, per year in the uh, uh, products shipped that have HDMI integrated into it. And a few years back, I remember when HDMI 2 came out and people were talking about 4K, well, well, those, those TVs are beautiful, but they're so expensive. Well, in a few short years, those prices have come rapidly down, and the penetration rate and the shipment rates have grown dramatically. And so now, at least in the U.S., it's very difficult to go find non-4K TVs. Pretty much you go into a, you know, a Best Buy or Walmart, and it's 4K featured everywhere. And the prices have come down so much, it's pretty much what a consumer will walk out of the store uh, to put under the Christmas tree. And as you can see here, the forecast is uh, by 2020, in two more years, 50% of the TV ship worldwide uh, will be 4K. <coughs> so what's next? Uh, one of the things you're going to see at the show here is the announcement of 8K commercially available 8K TVs. The past few years, you've seen a lot of demos from multiple uh, brands which show off their 8K prowess, but they were not announced for product availability, shipping, pricing. This year, you're actually going to see some commercial products. And HDMI is an important interface to enable source devices to connect each uh, 8K uh, to that. And then the question I always get asked is what about the content? You know, great, I have this super high resolution TV, but can I use it? Can I see anything on it? And the, we heard the same thing with 4K, 
Uh, but now 4K content is ubiquitous. It's, it, I can get it from multiple sources and it looks fantastic on my TV. And 8K is being driven right now by a couple of upcoming Olympics, the uh, Japan Olympics in Tokyo in 2020, uh, but also uh, in China, they've announced the Beijing Olympics will also be uh, broadcast in 8K as well in uh, 2022. So resolution's easy to talk about. Uh, it's a number, people get it, you know, 4K's better than the 1080p, 8K is better than 4K, but there's a lot of other interesting and very useful features uh, that can be applied to today's products using HDMI. And uh, as we see virtual reality, augmented reality, they're one of the drivers behind higher frame rates, higher resolutions. Uh, when you put a display right next to your eye, you can start to see the pixels. And so there's a strong desire to go to 4K displays per eye, 120 frames per second, so I get 60 seconds refresh rate per eye. It's one of the drivers that you know, HDMI 2.1 uh, can be useful for. We also see the drone cameras. Uh, those are driving to higher resolutions and drones being commercially deployed into all sorts of uh, uses out there. Uh, agricultural, filming, uh, surveying, real estate, and th those two have a desire to move to higher resolutions. We also see uh, new, new categories like automotive who want to connect to various devices uh, in the car using HDMI. And we also want to have an improved experience with our displays at home, uh, such as having smoother, faster, no lag, no latency, and blackout free switching. When you switch between sources, when you switch amongst content types or even content resolutions or frame rates, you don't want that screen to go black. You don't want to see tearing. You just want to have an instant smooth experience. And we're also going to see and hear a lot about dynamic HDR at the CES. Uh, that's really one of the standout technologies that consumers can really grasp and see. You see that with your eye. You see this high dynamic range really pops the image off the screen. Uh, prior, HDMI supported what's called static, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, dynamic makes it even better on a scene by scene, frame by frame basis. And also, improving the audio experience through uh, surround sound systems and also sound bars and sound bases uh, by bringing out the enhanced audio return channel or EARC. So let me turn it over to Robert, the president of the forum here. He will talk about the uh, HDMI forum. And that's the entity, as Brad mentioned, uh, behind the HDMI 2.1 specification. Robert. Thank you, Rob. I'm here to speak a little bit about the HDMI Forum. Uh, the HDMI Forum has the mission to support and develop future versions of the HDMI specification. And we also support the ecosystem, which is of many interoperable HDMI devices. We also foster a broad industry participation in the development of the future specifications. And the HDMI forum milestones are as listed here. October 25th, 2011 is when the HDMI forum incorporated was established. September 4th, 2013 was when the HDMI 2.0 specification was released. April 8th of 2015, we released version 2.0a, and then on March 9th of 2016, we released version 2.0b. And as many of you know, last year on November 28th of 2017, we released uh, the 2.1 version. 
The organization brings together the world's leading companies, including manufacturers of consumer electronic devices, personal computers, mobile devices and cables, components of silicon. And I'll reiterate that. The, the membership of the forum does consist of a wide variety of companies from all parts of the CE industry and IT industry. The movie studios and content providers, service providers, test labs, and test equipment manufacturers are also involved in the HDMI forum. And last year, the forum has grown from 83 to 92 members. And this, so everybody has a historical perspective, in October of 2011, the forum started with about 40 members. So we've had a, a great increase in membership over the years. Here's a eye chart for you. It lists a number of the members who are part of the HDMI forum. I'll give you time to take pictures. It's in the press kit, too. Yes, it's also in the press kit. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. The HDMI forum membership is open to any interested company wishing to become a member. Companies are encouraged to apply and to help shape the future of HDMI technology. And the benefits of participation is with the HDMI specification itself and to gain insight into the future of the HDMI technology. And members are eligible to join the technical working group, the marketing working group, and be elected to the board of directors. And with that, my portion of the presentation is completed. I'll turn it over to Rob. Okay, thank you, Robert. And uh, he'll be available after the press conference to take questions about the forum. So now I have the honor and the pleasure of uh, talking to you about HDMI 2.1. As Robert pointed out, the 90 companies that are forum members, uh, they're the world-class experts in audio-video connectivity and products and technologies, uh, released the 2.1 specification in November. And now that the specification has been released, we can talk more details about it, and uh, we'll do so here today. Today we'll just be mostly high level, but uh, we'll have a Q&A afterwards, so please uh, ask us your questions then, and then we're available at the booth throughout the show to come by to see demos, and also to talk more about the details of the product and the specs. So first, we'll start out with the higher resolutions and the faster refresh rates. So the, the title is 8K, you know, that, yeah, there's a lot of attention from people uh, as the industry jumped from 1080p to 4K and now is making the uh, transition and leap into 8K. Uh, so you'll see some beautiful screens demonstrated out there. And uh, as we move to this higher resolution, which is about four times the resolution of 4K or Ultra HD. So in addition to this spec supporting 8K, it also supports all the way up to 10K. And it also supports 5K. So those are the ultra-wide uh, formats out there that will be used by display devices, both uh, traditional TVs, but also in the uh, monitor space as well, that where uh, very widescreen um, uh, displays are very useful for a variety of applications. We're also going to see faster refresh rates. And in fact, here at the show, you're going to start seeing TVs that are 4K 120. And so uh, back in the 1080p era, uh, there was a race and a push for, you used to see refresh rates at 120 frames or even 240 frames per second. And those were mostly uh, FRCs or frame rate up conversions in these displays uh, that took a 1080p 60 signal and uh, used some processing algorithms to try to smooth out the motion. Well, now they're going to bring it through the interface to the source devices. And as we will see content out there take advantage of it uh, for high motion 
uh, both in uh, TV world as well as movie world, but uh, especially sports sees that there could be a, a great advantage to going to these higher refresh rates. In addition, getting wider color gamuts such as BT2020 uh, really helps to uh, render colors that are more realistic in life. And these are, uh, you'll see it with these content uh, that embrace HDR. Uh, a lot of times people think these wider color gamuts are part of HDR. Uh, they're separate, but they tend to get bundled together to give you higher dynamic range, higher color range, as well as uh, bigger contrast ratios. And getting this to more bits of color gives you more resolution in the, the color space that gets rendered by these displays. And I talked a little earlier about dynamic HDR. I think this is one of the most exciting features. Really gives a strong visual uh, difference that consumers can rapidly tell, wow, this picture is just amazing and huge improvement over the display I own today. So back in the 1080p era, again, we had SDR. Uh, and then recently, with the HDMI 2.0 spec A, uh, static HDR was brought, HDR10. And now we're moving to the dynamic HDR uh, era. And so this really gives an improved picture quality. And at the end of the day, that's what consumers look for. Uh, when they look for reasons to upgrade their TV or display, uh, they want to see a noticeable picture quality improvement. And this dynamic HDR is going to be one of those capabilities that uh, should drive consumers to look for new displays. And as we move from static HDR, which took an average of the whole piece of content and applied it, uh, that gave a, a good improvement in picture quality. But dynamic now allows you to go scene by scene, or even in some cases frame by frame, and apply specific metadata to that particular scene or image. And I'm going to flip these slides back and forth. So as you can see here on the static HDR, the bright scenes are a little muted and the dark scenes, uh, you lose some of that sky and background. So you, you get a lot more detail that pops out. And uh, across the show floor, you'll see a lot of dynamic HDR demonstrations out there. Uh, there's a number of technologies of dynamic HDR. HDMI is agnostic. It can carry any of those that are out there. Uh, what HDMI has done is define how the metadata gets carried uh, in the signaling, where it gets carried, so the source can signal to the sink, go into dynamic HDR of certain flavor, and the sink will know where to find that data and how to extract it and how to process it. And to get to this high performance, a new cable has been defined called the Ultra High Speed HDMI Cable. And so the features that rely on the enhanced high bandwidth uh, will need this new cable. And so if you're going to 8K, you're going to 10K, 4K 120, uh, this new cable is required to carry those high performance uh, features. In addition, there are improved specifications and there will be improved testing for EMI. So as we go to these very high speeds, there's a potential for interference with the wireless radios that are built into these products, whether it's a TV that has Wi-Fi in it uh, or a smartphone that has uh, multiple types of radios. And so the objective there is to ensure this cable does not act like an antenna and, and transmit EMI to interfere uh, with these radios. And we're jumping up significantly in bandwidth. The 2.0 spec was 18 gigabits. 
and now we're jumping up to 48. So huge increase in bandwidth. And so that, therefore we've identi uh, defined in the 2.1 spec the ultra high speed HDMI cable. And uh, that uh, is also this cable is fully backwards compatible so that if you plug in this cable into your existing 1080p or 4K, uh, it'll work. Enhanced audio return channel, otherwise known as EARC. So this is a very exciting feature. A lot, of, a lot of times people focus on the visual aspects. What's the resolution? What's the frame rate? What's the color depth? But audio is just as important, especially if you want a home theater experience. And so uh, the industry continues to embrace uh, surround sound audio systems using AVRs. But now that the TVs have become thinner, uh, speakers, hard for people to hear, the audio is not as clear, <coughs> sound bars and sound bases have become a very important accessory uh, for home theaters. And now eARC just expands the audio capabilities uh, over the back channel of HDMI. And so current, the, the prior version of ARC was based upon SpeedIF, which uh, was mainly based upon the stereo and the 5.1 surround sound. But now with more channels, up to 32 channels, uh, the high bit rate audios and the object audios coming from the usual sources, uh, there was a, a lack over the HDMI cable uh, to carry that, but no more. Uh, this feature will enable a, a you know, stream something over the cloud to your TV that has the latest and greatest object audio, and over the HDMI cable, you're able to send that to your uh, soundbar or AVR for processing. And this is this and dynamic HDR and some of these other features uh, are independent of the uh, ultra high speed cable and bandwidth. So some of these features can be applied to uh, products that uh, are using the existing uh, 80 gigabit performance. And the next few features are based on this enhanced refresh, refresh rate. Uh, there's a number of different ones that we'll go through here. And so it's supposed, the, the goal behind this feature, these set of features, are to ensure an enhanced, an added level of smooth and seamless motion and transition as you go from gaming to movies to video, back and forth, different uh, resolutions, different frame rates, uh, different types of content. So the first is variable rate refresh. Uh, this is something we've already seen in some of the uh, GPUs or game cards from the likes of uh, NVIDIA and AMD. They have their proprietary version of this. This is now part of the HDMI standard. So uh, this can be taken advantage of from the whole industry, which allows the source to change the refresh rate in, in real time. So traditionally video has been like 24 frames a second for movies, 30 or 60 frames a second for TV. Uh, and games had to adapt. That was the only way they were able to send video. Well, sometimes you want to send video faster, sometimes slower. And this allows the link to send it and change the refresh rate real time. So as soon as an image is rendered, the source can send it over HDMI to the sink and render that immediately. And so what are the benefits behind this? And if you've ever played some first person shooter games, racing games, things that are very fast and interactive, you know, you want low latency, sometimes you'll see some screen tearing on there. Uh, frame stutter, skipping, and uh, game interaction lag. So this is all aimed at reducing that, improving the ex gaming experience on, 
on devices connected using HDMI 2.1. So another offshoot is quick media switching. And so if you're ever you know, connected to like your cable set-top box or today your media streaming box connected to the cloud or satellite, when you change channels, you might go from uh, standard definition to high definition or now you might go to high def to ultra high def. You might change frame rates from a movie at 24 frames a second to a TV show that's 30 or 60 frames a second. Well, sometimes you see a, a black screen or uh, some other sort of interruption, and it's not very smooth and seamless. And so this allows the devices to instantly change the refresh rate, eliminate that screen blackout, and provide a seamless transition. So, you know, half a second, a second, that's noticeable to consumers. So to remove that is a very valuable capability. And as we can see here, as you switch from a sports to a movie to a TV show, it'll help reduce the delay and any black screens you might see. So another feature is called Quick Frame Transport, QFT. I get a love it when engineers get together and and name things, but uh, it, it'll be memorable. And so uh, this allows a source to send a frame as soon as it is rendered. And so this enables it to get over to the, to the sink, the display, uh, who can render it as fast as possible uh, and put it up on there. And this is really important for, once again, gaming, but also uh, real-time interactive virtual reality. You want that image on the display as fast as possible. And for those who love karaoke, we had to throw that in there. You get your responsive karaoke. Uh, auto low latency mode. And so here, the focus was enabling a source to tell a display automatically go into low latency mode. And this is important for, once again, you know, gaming systems. Today, our gaming systems are not just for games anymore. They're also media boxes. They're web surfing devices. So the user might be watching a TV show or movie being streamed from the cloud uh, and then switches to a game. But rather than forcing the consumer to pick up the TV's remote control, go into settings, switching to a, a low latency mode for gaming, it'll happen automatically. So once again, putting intelligence in the system carried over the HDMI makes the experience that much better, that's much easier for the consumer. So that's HDMI 2.1, very exciting. Come by the booth, we have demonstrations there, we can give you more details. So we'll give you an update on the premium HDMI certification program. So as I showed earlier, there's hundreds of millions of ultra high speed or ultra HD 4K products in the marketplace today. And as we jump up into the 18 gigabit per second, we wanted to ensure there are quality cables that have been tested and certified in the marketplace. And that is the impetus between the HDMI premium cable certification program. So it does a few important tests, uh, tests for uh, the enhanced speeds, the 18 gigabits. It also tests for EMI. Uh, once again, we wanted to ensure to, to reduce the interference. Uh, the 2.1 spec takes these and, and raises the bar even further. There's a des design guideline, uh, authenticity and verification program, uh, which includes this uh, label there and a counterfeit label. We also do product lifecycle checks and audits, so it's important for us that we go out and randomly sample cables in the marketplace and test those. We want to we want to instill the confidence in the industry, the distributors, the brands, the retailers, and consumers that if they're buying an HDMI premium certified cable, it's going to work. And so, if we find issues, we go back to the manufacturers and we work with them to solve their manufacturing issues 
to ensure their products are in compliance at all times. And then we also have this app that you can scan to ensure that it's an authentic label and an authentic product. And this program's been out for a few years. It's been very successful. Uh, you'll see some of the participants and retailers and brands on the next slide here. And it's the only HDMI cable test program that is administered by HDMI LA. Uh, so that is the uh, real seal of approval. Uh, it requires each length of cable to be tested, not just one sample for that product line. Uh, it has to be tested at an HDMI authorized test center, uh, which is also, those are also audited and certified to ensure they do quality testing. Uh, we talked about auditing these cables on a regular basis. Uh, they're required to use these anti counterfeit labels so consumers can identify easily these cables. And also this uh, two-level authentication app to help verify that the labels are not counterfeit. So here are some of the brands and retailers and participants. You can see here are some big names such as Best Buy and Walmart have their uh, house branded cables, uh, part of this. Uh, Media Market, Amazon, uh, so wide range of retails. And you can see also in the, um, uh, all these, these other brands specifically that many of them are focused on the the uh, pro market, uh, CDM marketplace, where the pro AV installers uh, look for high quality cables uh, to put into their installations. And another new development, it's a recent development, is the HDMI alt mode for the USB Type-C. So this brings together two of the most popular connectivity standards, USB, HDMI. And so a few years ago, Type 8, USB IF, and uh, the USB Implementers Forum uh, developed the USB Type-C connector. And with it, they wanted to enhance the capability of a small form factor connector, make it reversible, add more pins, and develop what they call alternate mode. And this alternate mode allows other signaling such as HDMI to be carried over that connector. And so HDMI came out with a uh, version to enable that to be carried over the Type-C. There are other alternate modes out there. You may have seen some of them along the way. Those all require adapters, dongles, docks to connect to HDMI. And at the end of the day, that's the brand what consumers look for. They all know HDMI. They all want to connect whatever source device it is to an HDMI display. And this HDMI alt mode enables them to do that in a native manner. Using just a simple Type-C to HDMI cable. And the other big benefit are devices that implement the HDMI alt mode can <coughs> use the HDMI brand. So they're able to go advertise to consumers that this product supports HDMI. And that's what consumers look for when they want to buy products that they want to connect to their TV or their monitor or their projector. So I'm going to wrap it up here. And after I'm done, we will open up the mic for Q&A. Uh, but first, I want to invite everybody to come by the HDMI LA booth. We're in South Hall. Uh, booth 2542, and you will see demonstrations, multiple HDMI 2.1 demos. Uh, you'll see a variety of HDMI premium cables displayed there, and we'll also see the HDMI alt mode uh, for USB Type-C. In addition, we have a number of kiosks from HDMI adopters showing off a variety of HDMI-enabled uh, products. So please stop by, and uh, Brad mentioned, if you want to set up a appointment time, uh, we'll be more than happy to do that as well. So thank you. Thank you, Rob.
appreciate that. So now we'll do some Q&A. Uh, we'll have everybody who's presented here and representing both the forum uh, and HTMI available for questions. So just to uh, recap, forum mem uh, representative, we got Robert, uh, the president, chairman, uh, Chris Pascolino, and Rob is the CEO and the president of HTMI LA, and myself, uh, Jeff Park, director of technology at HTMI LA. Uh, so open for questions, sure. Can you uh, update where you stand with regard to 2001 compliance testing? And the fact is you announced 2001 at this very place a year ago, yet you didn't, you didn't release the spec until November 28th. You kind of described the manufacturers in introducing 2001 compatible product until the 2019. Why did it take so long? So two questions I heard there. One was compliance test, what's the status of that, essentially? Um, the status of the compliance test right now is it's actually the top priority of the HDMI forum to develop a complete compliance test, uh, testing all elements of that. Um, it is a very deep spec. Uh, there's a lot of new technology integrated into the spec. The, the text actually doubled in terms of total length. So, so it's a big spec. Uh, and there's a lot to test. And so what's going to happen is there's going to be a staged rollout of the compliance test. Uh, major features will get rolled out. Um, I, I don't know the ordering just yet, but we're going to focus on them. And basically, as things become available, the compliance tests will be released for the major features that we go down the pipe. Um, the second question was, why did it take so long? That's a good question. Um, well, we have 92 companies. Uh, all with differing opinions, uh, working with a very complex technology, and um, the newer te technologies, the ones that get us up to 40 gigabits per second, the new cable, these are all very complex, um, and there were just a lot of fine details. And it's really important that we, you know, the forum felt it was very important that we ensure that we have a complete spec with, you know, the, the least amount of little hiccups in it as possible, and just being very de detailed, very thorough. May, may I follow up? Um, why then did you announce last year at CES that you expect to release in second quarter? Um, and um, can you give a timetable to the first phase of the rollout of the compliance test? Well, <laughs> why was there such a big difference? It's because we got a lot more comments back than we were guesstimating. It's always a guess. You say, what's my spec like at the point we make an announcement? Because people want to know when are you going to come out with it. You say, well, I think we're going to get about this many co uh, comments that need to be resolved and technologies that need to be cleaned up. And then you get a bigger number. It takes longer time. Um, so at the time we gave the estimate, that was our best estimate. Um, as far as the compliance test goes, um, I'm expecting that we're going to start get, seeing something in Q2 of this year. All right. Just to add to that, thank you, Chris. Uh, just as a whole, HTMI in the past and as a philosophy, uh, we know HTMI has a big impact. We saw the market slides. We're approaching a billion products per year. So any spec we release uh, every, every time has a huge impact. So when we release stuff, we want to make sure it does what it needs to do uh, properly so that when manufacturers release products, it works uh, as best possible. Any other questions? Yes. Um, I have two questions. Uh, about HDR10 plus, uh, HDR10 plus HDR2.1, do you have any uh, relation between HDR10 plus and HDR2.1 dynamic HDR? Well, HDMI 2.1 supports multiple dynamic HDR formats. Yeah. HDR10 plus, yeah. as, far, as far as I understand, does not require HDMI 2.1 dynamic HDR mechanisms. <coughs> So it just depends. There's some proprietary implementations uh, that are on the market that can work on existing HDMI platforms. Uh, some of the newer ones, uh, additional ones that may require uh, HDMI 2.1 mechanisms to run dynamic HDR. So it just depends on the platform and, and the, the content. Yeah. Yeah, if I may, um, just to add a little more to that. So HDMI, um, our goal is uh, to enable competition in the marketplace uh, between all the various vendors who are developing product. And HDR10 Plus is one of the competing technologies. Um, there are a number of others. Uh, and HDMI's role in this is not to pick the winner and the loser. It's to, as best we can, support the, those technologies that seem most likely to succeed in the marketplace. And then let the marketplace ultimately decide 
what is going to be the uh, technology that gets used or technologies that get used. But it's not, the forum's position is not one where we try to pick winners and losers. And the second question is about uh, uh, optical fiber-based uh, HDMI cable. Uh, some manufacturing uh, is selling that type of cable, but there are some uh, compatibility, compatibility problem with that uh, optical fiber or active HDMI cable. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to handle these optical based HDMI cable specs in HDMI specification. So the, the can you repeat the question? Yeah. So the question was, how are we going to handle uh, some? You say reported problems with the HDMI optical cables. Are we referring to 2.1 cables? The, the spec is not released yet. So existing cables. So uh, this is the last question. Just to, uh, before I answer your question, um, we will be outside to take any additional questions right after the answer to this question. Because uh, we're out of time for this room, but we'll be right outside so you guys can grab us, any of us here, to uh, answer any questions. So to your question, I'm not sure which problem you're referring to, uh, but if there are existing cables that run off of the 1.4B specification, uh, they're converter cables. So basically they take HDMI signal, convert it to some proprietary implementation of fiber signal, and convert it back. So what HDMI compliance testing does is test the HDMI portion. And if there's any issues with proprietary implementation, whether it be fiber, wireless, Ethernet, HDMI, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's really outside the scope of HDMI. Uh, but within the HDMI ecosystem, it doesn't matter the HDMI version number. HDMI comes in, HDMI goes out, that ecosystem is tested. And if there's any issues in between, that's really uh, out of our scope. So, yes. Last one. Last one. Oh, we do? Yeah. One more. One more. Sorry, one more. What's the main difference between the premium HDMI cable and ultra high speed HDMI cable? So, the question was what's the difference between premium HDMI cable and ultra high speed HDMI cable? So, the premium cable uh, program was launched soon after HDMI 2 was launched to support um, 18 gigabits per second cable compliance testing and additional program benefits such as uh, anti-counterfeit and uh, other auditing uh, portions. So as you, uh, some of you may not be familiar, but when HDMI 2 was released, there was no new cable spec part of that HDMI 2 specification because the specification was designed from the get-go to use existing cables. So existing cables uh, that were compliant had the capacity to support 18 gigs. When, it was eight, uh, when the Category 2 high-speed cables were originally launched back in 1.4, it was designed for that cable to support 10.2 gigabits per second. But when HDMI 2 was developed by the forum, they designed around the existing cable to support the higher bandwidth. Uh, but to give the market and, and consumers more assurance, we created an additional layer on top to provide uh, the certification program. Ultra high-speed uh, cables that were being launched with HDMI 2.1 goes much further. Now these cables are designed to go even beyond that. So it's 48 gigabits, even higher with compression. Uh, so it's a completely new spec definition. Now it's, uh, in the spec term, it's called category three. So we have category one, category two, now category three. So it's a complete with different uh, cable. Uh, and they, there, there will be some sort of certification program, obviously, for that as well. Just like anything else, HDMI always had compliance programs for everything. So that cable will also have some sort of program we don't have any details to release today, uh, but once we do, we'll, you'll have uh, more information from us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. okay, thank you very much. We'll be outside if you need anything else. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.